Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this short video we're going to talk about the carb heat. If you are flying an airplane with a carburetor on its engine then you have a carb heat and you need to know how to use it. So the carb heat control on the Cessna 172 is right here and I'm going to show you how to use that and why you need to use your carb heat. Before we get into discussing how to use carb heat and how it works, is let's just find out when ice will form in the carburetor. And this is a chart that you can find in my favorite place. You're probably getting tired of this by now, but the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, and you can find this at FAA.gov. Here it is right here. And you want Chapter 7. And you can find this chart and a lot more information about engines and stuff related to engines. All right, so here we see that there is a possibility of ice forming under these conditions. We have relative humidity on this side and outside temperature along the bottom. So you can see here if we have a relative humidity uh, between 65 and 72 or so and a temperature of 32 degrees or 90 degrees, there's a possibility the ice will form in the carburetor. And then up here you can see there's a very likely chance because of the high humidity that ice will form under these conditions. So above 80% relative humidity and 70 degrees, you're going to most likely have ice forming in the carburetor. All right, so let's take a look and see how the carb heat works. All right, the Cessna 172N has a four cylinder, one, two, three, four cylinder, carbureted engine. And I'm sorry to say this is a fuel injected picture, but just imagine that the carburetor is sitting right here and we have a manifold, intake manifold, going to each cylinder instead of this fuel injected stuff. So we have a four cylinder engine with a carburetor on it. It's an updraft carburetor, so this would be looking up at the bottom of the engine. So let's take a look at the carburetor. All right, this is a cutaway of an updraft carburetor similar to the one found on the Cessna 172N. Air is drawn in through the air inlet, and it goes through this restricted area, or the venturi, and this is where fuel is drawn into the carburetor. And from there, it travels out of the carburetor through the intake manifold to each individual cylinder. So let's take a look and see where ice can form and how that happens. Carburetor ice can occur due to the effect of the fuel vaporization and the decrease in air pressure in the venturi area, which causes a sharp temperature drop in the carburetor. If water vapor in the air condenses when the carburetor temperature is at or below freezing, ice may form on these surfaces, as you can see here on the sides of the carburetor wall and on the throttle valve. So this is a condition we really want to avoid. So let's take a look and see how the carburetor heat actually operates in the airplane, a Cessna 172. Well, first off, I want to apologize for my ridiculous little drawing here. I couldn't find anything really decent that would show this. So I've created my own little diagram here. So this represents the carburetor heat system on a Cessna 172N. At the front, we have an air filter. And in normal circumstances, with the carburetor heat off, we draw air in through the filter. It goes into a mixing box here, and we have a valve here, and it diverts the air into the carburetor. So this would be our normal operation when we're not using carb heat. In the carburetor heat mode, as we pull out that lever for the carb heat, we close off the air intake and now we divert air from the outside air to air from the carb heat system, which is 
taken from around the exhaust manifold. So as the exhaust from the engine goes out of the engine through the exhaust, there is a little heat exchanger around the exhaust manifold. And the outside air now is drawn across this heat exchanger into the mixing box and up into the carburetor. So now we are on full carb heat. So carb heat is great for keeping ice from forming inside the carburetor. But did you notice we have an air filter here when we are in our normal operation, but there is no air filter when we're drawing air around the exhaust manifold. Now this has two purposes here without having a filter. One, if your air filter for some reason gets all clogged up, say you flew through some dust or some crud and you could not draw enough air in for the engine to run, you can flip over to the carb heat side and this will draw air in with no restrictions of a filter. So there are circumstances where this could help when you don't have ice forming. But we'll talk more about that as we get up in the airplane and we actually do some work with the carb heat. So carb heat is one of those things that we need, not necessarily like. Most of the time, under normal circumstances, you will not use the carb heat for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Number one is there's no filter on that, so you can actually do some damage to your engine flying through dust and crud in the air that gets into the engine that the filter would normally filter out. But there are times we must use the carburetor heat or we will get ice forming in the carburetor. And that's normally when we find ourselves below the green line in our RPM. This little green section here, once we drop out of that, we're going to need the carb heat. The carb ice forms at the lower RPMs. So anytime you get below this green arc, you really need to turn on the carb heat. Now this does not mean that you won't need to use the carburetor heat in these other upper RPM areas. It just means you will need it almost all the time below that. You looked at that chart. Remember we had looked at that chart a little earlier and it showed us the conditions that could cause icing. We always use carb heat in the lower RPMs and then we pay attention to the conditions we are flying in and pay attention to how the engine is running. If you find yourself flying in conditions where icing may happen, then you want to pay attention to how your engine is operating. So if you feel like you're losing power or your engine is running a little rough, you might just want to turn on that carb heat just to make sure it's not the icing if you are in a situation where it could form. Now this is not to say that running rough or a loss of power is the cause because of icing, but it could be. All right, so when exactly do we use the carb heat then? Well, when landing. Here we are, we're coming in to good old Benton Field, runway 33, and look at our RPM. We had to cut the throttle way back. We we're on low RPM, so every time you land, you are going to put the carb heat on. So I need to get over here and work the carb heat and make sure that the carb heat is on. So I pull the carb heat out all the way, not halfway, quarter way, but I turn it completely on. Or that's what I want to do on every landing. Now the other thing you need to know is when not to use carb heat. So most of the time you won't need to use your carb heat in normal flight unless you meet those conditions. Or you notice the engine is running a little bit rough and you suspect carb heat. Other than that, you're going to have your carb heat turned off and only use it when landing. And always make sure it's turned off when you are taking off. You want maximum power when taking off. And as I mentioned earlier, carb heat will rob you of a little bit of power. The engine is not as efficient. So that's it for my short little video here on the carburetor heat. I hope you learned something that it helped you a little bit. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. Thank you.
so much for watching, and God bless.